So the, the the earlier guys who who sort of posed this question, did they have? I mean, they're. I mean, even so, we've brought up three names: Heraclitus, Empedocles, and Socrates, Plato. Um, yeah. They all seem interested in this problem and see it as a real problem but and so socrates is, is solution is sort of just well i mean you can't it's almost like to try to just say what his solution is, is is to defeat exactly what you just said which is that you don't just say a logical statement and there there's the argument it's that you have to sort of experience the myth you have to experience the conversation yeah there's a whole school of thought now um and i think it's very compelling uh that plato's dialogues are just part on the almost scriptural dimension of a retro richer tradition, which we've largely lost, that Plato was actually engaged in a kind of a schesis, uh, a, a, a religious tradition, a practice, um, and that philosophy was one part of it, much like philosophical discourse is one part of yoga in India. It has all these other limbs, right? I think the, there's eight limbs of yoga, or there might have been something like that in Athens and Plato. What we the texts that he left behind are just one aspect mm. of uh, a religious practice, a mystic a mystical practice aimed at kind of union with the one or something like that. There's also a very interesting aspect of Plato, which is his unwritten doctrines, right? Um, so Plato uh, in Aristotle, Aristotle makes reference to Plato's unwritten doctrines, and Aristotle actually talks about like because he was taught by Plato. So he often has little asides about, yeah, Plato used to say this, but uh, it's kind of weird to read Aristotle talk about Plato. <laughs> it's like really strange. But um, he says, uh, he makes reference to this unwritten doctrine. And we have in another text, I can't remember who it is, it's some other ancient text actually describes this talk that Plato gave in Athens about the one and the good, the good. I think it was called the good, the talk. And in that, he kind of lays out a very kind of... Um, almost Gnostic uh, vision of the cosmos as the one, and then um, the, the dyad, which is this other aspect of the one which separates things. And this whole kind of more mystical religious uh, tradition that Plato would have been a proponent of, that we've kind of lost that. Which I have another friend who even wants to to, to glue that together with the Christian doctrine of the Trinity, of that there's like a, there's a oneness, and then there's the dyad, and they come together and you have this Oh, triune triangle, that's, right? That's what it is. <laughs> he is. I, I think of it that way too. Plato invented Christianity. <laughs> Seriously, like yeah. he, he, it's so close. It's, I mean, you can look at it if you're, if you're, See, this stuff, this is why I want to hear you talk to John Verveke sometime, is because I think you guys both resonate on this point a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. He, he set the stage, you know, and, and, and Christianity is, you know, Nietzsche said Christianity is Plato for the masses. And I think that's completely right. The only thing that Nietzsche has nothing but contempt for the masses, but I have, I'm a democratic person. So I have a lot of respect for the masses. So like Plato is Christianity is Plato for, for people as opposed to specialists mm. or aristocrats. Yeah. So it, it somehow is, is a myth that, so I, I, I my into, I mean, partially it's, there's a bias because I was, I was raised I'm I'm a Western. I'm a I'm a white guy. I, I was raised in a, in a in a Christian family, so like Christianity, there's there's bias that's in the bottom of my soul. That's like, oh, somehow my religion has to be. It's got to be the answer somehow, right? And even even if you know, even if I want to step back and be a little bit more inclusive to other religions, it's like I still need to, regardless of whether or not it's the only way of of coming about an answer to this problem, it is. It it has to be my answer. Likely, I need to figure out how to square my own my own religious story with this problem if i if i want to engage with it right well that's that you know i i don't think it's particularly controversial to say that that christianity is platonic um if i spin it this way if i say plato was like john the baptist preparing us for the incarnation which is what some christians might say and that might be what i believe on some level um that would be a little too con contentious i think all i'm saying is that Christianity really, really draws deep on the Neoplatonic well when it when it formulates its doctrines. It really draws on Plato, and so um, and also I think that there was a problem in in Greek civilization, a pro a serious problem about what a what a human being is, what we should do, the ethical problem that. Um, Christianity came as an answer to. There were lots of answers being offered up in late antiquity. It was kind of a time of crisis, a lot like our times. And so all these answers were coming up and Christianity kind of like won. It became the answer that worked. 
Um, and and because it was resolving a lot of tensions that had, that had come up in the Neoplatonic tradition and Stoicism and all the other uh, spiritual traditions of the of the of late antiquity, there was something wasn't resolved. And um, Christianity came to resolve it. How else would you explain the success of a religion? It obviously result. It obviously answers some questions if it's yeah. spread like it did. So, you could also make an argument, I guess, if you're Muslim, that that Islam is actually the completion and, and plenitude and fulfillment of Plato. Um, some of the, it seems to me that some of the Islamic philosophers of the past might have argued that, um, but I don't know of any Jews who would claim that. Judaism is the is the full the, the the fulfillment of Plato because obviously Judaism draws on a, a different tradition um, like uh, and 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 Christianity I guess kind of tries to bring the mosaic tradition right right and in conjunction with the Platonic tradition um, and in fact that's another thing just out of just in case you're interested in any of this in late antiquity in Alexandria. Moses was as big as Plato. Like people were talking about Plato. People were talk, also talking about Moses, not just Jews, a lot of Hellenized Jews, but a lot, also a lot of just Greek thinkers. M Moses had shown up, showed up, and he was in a sense more ancient than Plato or it came from a totally different uh, place, but they were trying to show how Mo Moses was part of Plato, Plato's lineage um, preceding Plato. So that Plato had learned what he what he learned from Moses. But so um, I, I think the bigger question, though, is that why I, I, this is back to the question that we were already, I think, trying to, to, to dig into. And, and I think we, we have a partial answer, or at least you, you give me something here anyways, is that, OK, so myth, story, art somehow brings together paradoxical argument or, or, or paradoxical statements in a way that that, um, that just pure logical going back at it against each other can't do sometimes. Right. But so I want to do I want to I want to see how that relates to Christianity, but I want to I want to do something for a second.